Hello, folks. Hello, everybody. Oh, that seems to have frozen. That's excellent. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> we got there Here in the are. end. Yeah. Folks, thank you for being there. Welcome to uh, Prehistory Guys. Um, Prehistory Flash, that's what we're calling them. Almost forgot. Yes, them. we are. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Michael here in Warwickshire. and uh, oh, Rupert here down in the not-so-sunny south of France, if I'm honest. It's been very grey and wet today. <laughs> but not to worry about that. Um, hello to you all. I won't go through all the all the names, but uh, as ever, thanks for being here. Um, mm. To the matter of the day, um, Neolithic life on Doggerland? Question um, mark. Yeah. Can we say something about the headlines that this is based upon? Well, I, I think you should. You you've got a string of them there, haven't you? Um, because I the have people. A few. Uh, it, if you, um, the thing is that the, the media tend to put out this, uh, uh, this well, they continue a mythology about Doggerland. And, uh, and the recent headlines uh, that came on the back of uh, Vince Gaffney, if you remember the interview that we did with him not, uh, not long ago, um, uh, Vince's uh, paper uh, has recently been published and essentially the the media just getting the wrong end of the stick and so we thought that we had better redress a balance here and um, yes yeah, so it's not a prehistory flash in the sense that we're presenting you with news but just trying to get our heads around uh, get past those headlines and actually some of the stories that have been in that about uh, Doggerland because of course it makes a good headline was the Doggerland being used as a bridging post in the Neolithic because previously we'd assumed um, that uh, Doggerland was underwater by the Neolithic. Were people living mm. on Doggerland uh, later on than we thought? And they make good headlines, and I suppose read them. I mean, I mean, I suppose we have to hold up our own hands, really. Um, our own headline goes down a bit of the a bit of the same route, to but degree, it does have a question yeah. mark on it, and it does not make a statement <laughs> about it. However, mm -hmm. the, yeah, what we're trying to say is that those headlines, as so often, as is so often the case, are masking something in the original material in the original uh, paper. Scientific mm. papers, the scientific papers, for the most part, are pillars for academia to build their knowledge upon, to 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 base, to build up their own thoughts. You know, so they so they're always stepping on safe ground if they come out with a big grand theory or what have you. And those big grand theories and statements come out only very rarely. Um, and but this is one of the stepping stone papers. It's not a, a declaration of of a fact that may have been, and that may have been the impression given by um, some of the headlines. So Rupert, let's start off. Just be getting clear about what we're talking about. We're talking about say words about uh, yeah the uh, well, landslide. There, 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 there was a perception which clings on, that there was this enormous tsunami caused by the Storega landslip back uh, 8,150 um, BC, BP. BP, I beg your pardon, uh, years ago, put it that <laughs> way. Um, and there's uh, there has been this perception that this massive tsunami ripped down through the North Sea, completely obliterated Doggerland. Would it help leaving... you put that map up, Rupert? Yes, if you got it there, yes, yeah, definitely. There that one. There you go. So look, you can you can see at the top there, you can see the uh, the Sturiga uh, strip. Uh, so that massive sheet just shifted and sent a tsunami right the way down through the North Sea. So you can see down towards, uh, well, off the um, east coast of, uh, of uh, England there, you can see Dogger Bank uh, stretching out across the North Sea. And so the, the perception was that this tsunami just wiped out everything on its way down and that nothing ever recovered, that it was essentially that way and, you know, 
on into the present, although obviously the land would have been a little bit bigger than that. But it turns out that this is not the case at all. And what they have been able to uh, glean from data is that sea level was already... um, a, a very movable thing that uh, that going back, uh, I think it was seven thousand years ago, that the uh, the, the land mass was was you know after the tsunami that the waters retreated and there was still uh, an enormous amount of land between uh, England and Scandinavia. Yeah, shall we um, uh, quickly uh, just whiz through that sequence because there is a handy sequence from the paper. It's, it give you an idea is such of, an illustrative thing. Of, yeah, 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 it is. So we got we got that, um, but uh, looking further down, you know, between um, Britain and, and Denmark, uh, this is what ten thousand years ago. This yeah. is, so this is quite a way before the tsunami happened. Uh, but because we're coming out of ice uh, ice ages here, um, the mm. sea level was rising anyway um, before yeah. any uh, tsunami came. So, so this is a thousand years, or sort of eight hundred or so years before, still before the tsunami came. We're still we've only got Dogger Island, and already the sea levels mm. have risen to you know really quite considerably uh, cut off us uh, from the, the continent. Um, next one. Right. So this is around the time that that mm. tsunami actually hit, and by this time mm. we've only got Dogger Island, uh, and now we're calling it the Dogger Archipelago, <laughs> or it is being yeah. called. <laughs> not me calling it, or Rupert calling it. It is <laughs> being called <laughs> the Dogger mm. Archipelago, uh, and uh, well, I mean. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> there we and go. afterwards, <laughs> yes. we're left with this. Still, our coastlines are extended, but mm. there's very li- li- little left uh, between. It's, it's, it's recognisable as not a million miles off where we are today. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but it, that's the important thing, is that what this is telling us very distinctly is that the, the tsunami event did not suddenly obliterate all life and activity on uh, on that landmass. The, yeah. the waters did recede, and uh, and in certain places, life carried on. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think this is the boring bit behind the headlines. Is that the paper that they're based upon is is a very technical paper that is mm. mostly a discussion about the different models that have been used to uh, different computer models that have been used to uh, model what happened when the tsunami struck. Uh, you know, coming from a model that leaves everything underwater you know, to a model in which everything is much more nuanced and you get the feeling of what happened. Uh, anybody who watched the uh, seen footage from the tsunamis that have occurred um, in the last few mm. years of which we got footage, it's a frightening thing. But the dynamics mm. of them, uh, you know, are better understood. So being able to apply those models to uh, the uh, the North Sea uh, 8,000 uh, years ago gives a more nuanced feel for what was left afterwards. And that's mm. the speculation. Uh, and there is no proof of any habitation. There's no proof of them being used, the archipelago being used as a as a, a jumping off point for people come, still coming over from, from the continent. It mm. is merely a supposition. Yeah. But a fascinating yeah. one, it's, nonetheless, but nevertheless, just that. It, it, I'll tell you what's interesting. One of the other things uh, coming out of the paper was that uh, you can have a tsunami that creates a, a one metre. Uh, run-up is their description. So basically you've yeah. got a tsunami that is increasing your sea level by that amount and how far that spreads uh, inland and how utterly catastrophic one metre run-up is. Um, but the fact that you need a four metre run-up for it to actually have any impact on the geological record. Wow. Mm-hmm. So anything in between, there is just there's nothing to show for it. You mm-hmm. think, well, what's going on there? There's nothing to see, and that's because it just might not quite have been big enough. 
Um, what, I, what, what I want to do, Rupert, is that the basic facts that have come out of this, the basic uh, supposition, it, it seems like, but this is floating, all this is floating, if you forgive the slight pun, on <laughs> an incredible 15 years of research involving ups and downs and contingencies about where the research would go in the, in the first... We wouldn't be having this conversation... Uh, and there would be no detail to this if uh, Vince Gaffney, who's been, the, been one of the lead authors on, on this paper and who we interviewed mm. uh, a month or so ago, a couple of months, I can't remember, if he, he, he he's a Bradford University. He had a student called uh, Simon, um, Simon Fitch, and they were trying to work out how can we look at Dogland, because Dogland had been known about, as it's been known that, human beings inhabited Doggerland since 1931, since a trawler dredged up uh, that uh, red deer uh, mm. antler uh, harpoon from there. So it's been a thing. Doggerland has been a thing that worthy of investigation. And Vince knew 15 years ago that the way to investigate it would be to be able to map the surface down there under the sea and figure out where all the old rivers used to be and the inlets and the coastline and that kind of thing. Once you have that information, then you can put bores down into that to extract the information you need to be able to say people lived here or not or, you know, what was the process, what was the vegetation, all those things. And Simon Fitz, a student at the time, said, oh, there's this guy in the gas and oil industry. Why don't we ask yes. them? <laughs> that we, yes. we, we, we know of, I, mm. I know of. So they went along and asked. And it was astounding that they got through the door in the first place, apparently. But then the information that they asked for, that they knew the gas and oil industry had, the data that they had, was had been collected in the, in the 60s. And... There weren't the computers available then to interrogate that data for the surface stuff. It was all about what was lying deep, deep down, because that's all the oil and gas yeah. industry is interested in. Yeah. So it turns out that they wouldn't have given Vince this information, all this data about the North Sea, if they'd realised what he was trying to interrogate it for, because they thought at that time, well, you can't get that out of this data. But Vince mm. knew, actually, computers have come along a bit in the last uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, 20 years or so. Uh, no, more than that. And, uh, yeah, we probably can. So he did. And cutting a long story short, this is one of those stories of sheer will and personality and uh, and contingency. Do dogged in Doggerland. Dogged in Doggerland, you'd, you'd yeah. call it. And, you know, he... he, he uh, and it was always planned. This is the extraordinary thing. Over the last 15 yeah. years, the results he's getting now, he always planned to get. But, yeah. you know, it, there were so many things in the way. He got a grant, uh, what was it, around about 2014, um, for, to send ships out and get uh, put boreholes down and stuff like that. It's been a mammoth yeah. task. I just wanted to slip that in because I think that's the most interesting thing behind uh, uh, these headlines. And also, it, and it's not finished. They're planning on going out again oh, next no, year, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's the point. Um, yeah, the, the, their plans are bearing bearing fruit. Not only in terms yeah. of uh, of getting the sediments up, and of course, Vince talks about something I'd never heard of, of before. That's sedimentary DNA. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's. Um... <laughs> Well, it's, Kit, just thank you very much well indeed. That's very, very kind of you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, carry on, Rupert. Uh, no, no, no. I was just saying that it's it's another one of those unexpected aspects of archaeology that you know, it's, it's just it takes someone like Vince and his colleagues. You know, they have ideas that uh, that are just they're really out there. And yeah. uh, and so you never know what's going to um, come out of that level of data. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be remarkable so, to see what does develop out of this. Ignore these current headlines. The the big headlines <laughs> will be coming when he gets his sedimentary DNA up. And we're, we're not talking mm. about human DNA or anything like that. We're talking about the stuff that's the remnants of the vegetation and whatever was there. Mm. 
Uh, you know, there is so much in information can uh, can come as you probably know. I mean, the the, the amount of information you can uh, you can derive from knowing which types of flora were uh, were actually growing in different places, and that, that can be anything from a tree to a piece of lichen. It tells you everything about the environment. So, yeah, it it, it truly is incredible what's going to come out of that. Yeah, yeah. So I hope um, we've done what we set out to do, really, and that's just, just put a different perspective on those headlines, I think, uh, and, and that's mm. all. Uh, delivered what we find exciting about all, all that and our admiration for the, um, you know, for, for the drive behind yeah. uh, making this information uh, available in the end of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you can basically, you can, you can take from it that, that this tsunami event that everybody thought was the end of Doggerland was actually one aspect of changing sea levels over quite a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and the, the nuance and the detail of that is coming out. And that's what get, gives them the clue to be able to drill in the right places, to put to put um, yeah, boreholes yeah. down in the right places where they suspect if there was human activity, then they will get the results that will tell them that, yes, human activity uh, mm. and inhabitation was going on at this point. But until that time, that's mm. it, I'm rest, afraid. Rest assured, we will tell you when we know more. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and uh, yes, thanks, folks. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for, for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and found it just a little bit enlightening. And uh, we'll see you the next time. Bye bye from me. We were. And it's bye bye from me. See you soon. Bye. Cheers, folks. Bye bye. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gosh, I, I was shocked at the 10 minute mark to know that we'd, we'd come that far. I know. <laughs> oh, we're still broadcasting. <laughs> Hi, folks. <laughs> Hang on. We're I'm going now. Bye. <laughs>